Hey, amazing people, I'm back. And we are on chapter four in the fifth agreement. I'm Tracy Lene. And if you know, you know, I'm gonna read at my commentary. We are in the book, The Fifth Agreement. And I would love it if you would like this video, if you would subscribe to my channel, and if you would share, share, share. Here we go, fourth chapter. Every mind is a world. And we're dealing with the second agreement. Don't take anything personally. Remember the first agreement, be impeccable with your word. Now we're on the second agreement, don't take anything personally. When we were born, there are no symbols in our mind, but we have a brain and we have eyes and our brain is already capturing images that come from light. We start perceiving light, we become familiar with light. And the reaction of our brain to light is an endless play of images in our imagination, in our mind. We are dreaming. From the Toltec point of view, our whole life is a dream because the brain is programmed to dream 24 hours a day. When the brain is awake, there is a material frame that makes us perceive things in a linear way. When the brain is asleep, there is no frame and the dream has the tendency to change constantly. Even with the brain awake, we have the tendency to daydream and the dream is constantly changing. The, the imagination is so powerful that it takes us to many places. We see things in our imagination that other people don't see. We hear things that other people don't hear, or maybe we don't, depending on the way we dream. Imagination gives movement to the images we see, but the images only exist in the mind, in the dream. I was a child who had imaginary friends. My sister had imaginary friends. And I wanted to be liked by my sister's imaginary friends. Can you imagine that? My sister's imaginary friends, it was important that they liked me. So I said, let's introduce them to each other so that they like each other and then your imaginary friends can like me. And I remember one time, and I can still remember the name of her imaginary friends, but it was Shaw, Watermelon Head, and Curly. Those were her imaginary friends. And so one day we were sitting down on the porch eating M&Ms and she said, I don't want these M&Ms um, and I'm going to give them to Shaw. So I said, okay. And I said, what'd you say, Shaw? Okay. And I said, Shaw says you can give them to me. Now, honestly, Shaw did say that, even though I just wanted her M&Ms, I made her imaginary friend tell me that I could have the M&Ms. That's a true story. Light images, imagination, dreaming. You are dreaming right now. And this is something that you can easily verify. Perhaps you never notice that your mind is always dreaming, but if you use your imagination for just a moment, you will understand what I'm trying to explain to you. Imagine that you are looking into a mirror. Inside the mirror is a whole world of objects, but you know that what you see is just a reflection of what is real. It looks like it's real. It looks like the truth, but it's not real and it is not the truth. If you try to touch the objects inside the mirror, you only touch the surface of the mirror. What you see inside the mirror is just an image of reality, which means it's a virtual reality. It's a dream. And it's the same kind of dream that humans dream with the brain awake. Why? Because what you see inside the mirror is a copy of reality that you create with the capacity of your eyes and your brain. It's an image of the world that you construct within your mind, which means it's how your own mind perceives reality. When a, what a dog sees in the mirror is how the dog brain responds is how the dog's brain perceives reality. What an eagle sees in the same mirror is how the eagle's brain perceives reality. And it's different from your own. You ever watch the child see their face in the mirror and they just keep looking? And what's interesting is as babies, they don't know what they look like. But when they look in the mirror and they move, they see, wait a minute, they instinctively know that's me. It's really interesting. If you've never seen it, Google, baby seeing himself for the first time. Now imagine looking into your eyes instead of a mirror. Your eyes perceive light that's being reflected from millions of objects outside of your eyes. The sun sends light all around the world and every object reflects light. Billions of rays of light come from everywhere. Go inside your eyes and project images of objects into your eyes. You think you are seeing all these objects, but the only thing you are really seeing is the light that's being reflected. That's really deep. So I think I'm looking at my husband's infinity in front of me, but I'm just looking at light. Interesting. Everything you perceive is a reflection of what is real, just like the reflections in a mirror, except for one important difference. Beyond the mirror, there is nothing, but behind your eyes is a brain that tries to make sense of everything. Your brain is interpreting everything you perceive according to the meaning you give every symbol, according to the structure of your language, according to all of the knowledge that was programmed in your mind. Everything you perceive is being filtered through your entire belief system. And the result of interpreting everything you perceive by using everything you believe is your personal dream. 
This is how you create an entire virtual reality in your mind. This is how you think something that somebody else doesn't think, but you're convinced that they need to think the way you think because you thought it and they should think the way you think. Once you get this next concept, concept that I'm about to say, life changes. Remember this. They are not you. You are you. So the point of view changes drastically once the person changes. They're not you. They're not going to think like you think. Even if y'all have some similarities in what you believe, even in those similarities, there's differences because they are not you. You are the only you there is. So your way of seeing things is exactly that. Your way of seeing things. Even if you agree with the religion you're in or the politics, the, po what is the political party you're in, or the the group you're in, whether you're in a sorority or fraternity, whatever you believe, whatever you've accepted, it's still you accepting it. Okay. Perhaps you can see how easy it is for humans to distort what we perceive. Light produce, reproduces a perfect image of what is real, but we distort the images by creating a story with all those symbols and opinions that we learned. We dream about it with our imagination and by agreement, we think that our dream is the absolute truth. When the real truth is that our dream is a relative truth, a reflection of the truth that is always going to be distorted by all the knowledge we have stored in our memory. Different parts of the world have different religions and that's their truth. You decide to believe on your truth based upon what you decide to believe true. And unfortunately, where the whole world is fighting and killing each other over them trying to make their truth the truth. Man, many masters have said that every mind is a world, and it is true. The world we think we see outside of us is actually inside of us. It's just images in our imagination. It is a dream. We are dreaming constantly, and this has been known for centuries, not only in Mexico by the Toltecs, but in Greece, in Rome, in India, in Egypt, and Africa. Things here, but I'm adding it. People all over the world have said life is a dream. The question is, are we aware of it? When we aren't aware that our mind is always dreaming, it is easy to blame everyone and everything outside of us for all of the distortions in our personal dream, for anything that makes us suffer in life. When we become aware that we are living a dream that we, are, that we artists are creating, we take a big step in our own evolution because now we can take responsibility for our creation. So never again say to somebody, how could you do this to me? They're not doing it to you. They're doing it through you because you have decided to stand in front of them and be that target when they throw out whatever they're throwing out. You're the bullseye. But they're not doing it to you. You're accepting it. Once you take that personal accountability and say, okay, this may be your fault, but it is my responsibility to take care of me. You're not doing this to me except I accept it. And then you're not doing it to me. I'm doing it to my damn self. That gives you so much power. To realize that our mind is always dreaming gives us the key to changing our dream if we're not enjoying it. Who is dreaming the story of your life? You are. If you don't like your life, if you don't like you, what you believe about yourself, you're the only one who can change it. And that gets into all of the BBLs people are getting in the plastic surgery. I'm all for it. If that's what you need to change your dream. It's not for me to say, God didn't give you that nose. God didn't give you that ass. That's not for me to say, be safe though. I wouldn't do it because pretty pleased with my face and my body is my body because it's what I created it with the way I eat so if I want to make it different I have to eat different and exercise and I'm, I'm doing that babies I'm doing that but I don't feel the need for plastic surgery in any kind people do there are plenty of people who don't think I'm attractive and I don't give a good goddamn about none of y'all because I believe I'm beautiful and I don't even I don't need the people who believe I'm beautiful to validate my beauty. I validate my beauty myself. I had to start wearing different glasses all the time because I did not like wearing glasses, but I do like seeing clearly. So since I need glasses to see clearly, I had to find a way to now be able to switch up and wear any glasses I want anytime I feel like it. And sometimes people are like, I don't like them glasses on you. I'm like, well, that's you. I like them on me and I'm not concerned with you like. Or they'll say, I really like those glasses on you. And I don't have to be rude. That's you. I don't care what you like. I just go, thank you. But I do like them too. All right, here we go. If you don't like what you believe about yourself, you're the only one who can change it. It is your world. It is your dream. If you are enjoying your dream, that's wonderful. Then continue to enjoy each and every moment. If your dream is a nightmare, 
If there's drama and suffering and you're not enjoying your creation, then you can change it. I'm going to say that again. If your dream is a nightmare, if there's drama and suffering and you're not enjoying your creation, then you can change it. Don't try to wait for somebody else to change. Don't say, well, you know, my life would be great if my husband would stop, you know, drinking or smoking or whatever he's doing. Or my wife, my life would be great if my wife would cook. Clean. No, your life would be great if you accept your life is great. And maybe this isn't the partner for you because what you want, they don't embody. Go get this person that does. But do it the right way. Go have a conversation and say, these are the things that are very important to me. And doesn't seem like it's important to you. And that's okay. We're going to go ahead and part ways. If y'all got small children, y'all can parent together. It's better for a child to have two healthy households than one toxic motherfucking household all day, any day. I am sure you are aware there are millions of books in this world written by millions of dreamers with different points of view. Everybody got a point of view. It's like an ass. Everybody got one. Some people got bigger asses than others, but everybody got one. The story of you isn't the. Uh, I guess maybe there are people born with a. a no, everybody got one. Yeah. The story of you is as interesting as any of those books, and it's even more interesting because your story continues to change. The way you dream when you are 10 years old is completely different from the way you dream when you are 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 or the way you dream now. 56 is loading. On June 17th, I shall be 56 years old if God spares my life. The story you're dreaming today is not the same story that you were dreaming yesterday or even half an hour ago. Every time you talk about your story, it changes depending on who you're telling the story to. You know that's true. Depending on your physical and emotional state at the time. Depending on your beliefs at the time. Even if you try to tell the same story, your story is always changing. At a certain point, you find out that it's nothing but a story. It isn't reality. It's a virtual reality. It is nothing but a dream. And it is a shared dream because all humans are dreaming at the same time. The shared dream of humanity. The dream of the planet. Was there before you were born and this is how you learn to create your own art. The story of you. The second agreement, I just want to make sure I'm in it. This one may, may have to be broken down. It's a lot of pages. Oh, no, so much of it's okay. The second agreement, don't take anything personally. Let's use the power of our imagination to create a dream together, knowing that it's a dream. Imagine that you are in a gigantic mall where there are hundreds of movie theaters. You look around to see what's playing and you notice a movie that has your name. Amazing. You guys seeing that? So we're in this big old gigantic movie theater. You look around and there's the movie with your name. Woo! Tracy Lene starring Tracy Lene. Edited by Tracy Lene. Woohoo! You go inside the theater and it is empty except for one person. Very quietly, trying not to interrupt, you sit behind that person who doesn't, doesn't even notice you at all. The person's attention is on the movie. You look at the screen and what a big surprise. You recognize every character in the movie. Your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters, your beloved children, your beloved, your children and your friends. Then you see the main character of the movie. You got main character energy boo and it's you. You are the star of the movie and it is the story of you. And that person in front of you, well, it's also you. Y'all knew that. Spoiler alert. And the person in Sorry, I got to pull that shut. He's trying to come that way. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Uh, you, you are the star of the movie and it's story of you. And that person in front of you, well, it's also you. Watching yourself act in the movie. Of course, the main character is just the way you believe you are. And so are all the secondary characters because you know the story of you. After a while, you feel a little overwhelmed by everything you just witnessed and you decide to go into another theater. In this theater, there is also just one person watching the movie, and she doesn't even notice you when you sit beside her. You start watching the movie, and you recognize all of the characters, but now you're a secondary character. This is the story of your mother's life, and she is the one who is watching the movie with all her attention. Then you realize that your mother's not the same person who was in your movie. The way she projects herself is completely different in her movie. It is the way your mother wants everyone to perceive her. You know that's not authentic. You know that it's not authentic. She is just acting. But then you begin to realize that this is the way she perceives herself. And it's a kind of a shock. Then you notice that the character who has your face is not the same person who was in your movie. So you say to yourself, ah, this isn't me. But now you can see how your mother perceives you. 
You ever had a dream and the people in the dream don't look like the people that they are? That's the way you really perceive them in your subconscious mind. But consciously, they look the way they look. Now you can see how your mother perceives you and what she believes about you. And it is far from what you believe about yourself. Then you see the character of your father, the way your mother perceives him. And it is not all the way you perceive him. It's completely distorted. And so is her perception of all the other characters. You see the way your mother perceives your beloved and you get even a little upset with your mom. How dare she? You stand up and you get out of there. You go to the next theater and it's the story of your beloved. Now you can see the way your beloved perceives you and the character is completely different from the one who was in your movie and the one who was in your mother's movie. You can see the way your beloved perceives your children, your family, your friends. You can see the way your beloved wants to project him or herself and it is not the way you perceive your beloved at all. Then you decide to leave that movie and go to your children's movie. You see the way your children see you. You see the way they see grandma and grandpa and you can hardly believe it. Then you watch the movie of your brothers and sisters, of your friends, and you find out that everyone is distorting all the characters in their movies. You're like, I'm not that fat. How dare she see me that fat in her movie? Because in my movie, I'm five foot ten, so damn slim. I look like I'm always on a runway. After seeing all these movies, you decide to return to the first theater to see your own movie once again. You go, oh shit, I am fat. No, I'm just joking. You look at yourself acting in your movie, but you no longer believe anything you're watching. You no longer believe your own story because you can see that it's just a story. Now you know that all the acting you did your whole life was really for nothing because nobody perceives you the way you want to be perceived. Girl, did you hear that? Let me say that again. Now you know that all the acting that you did in your whole life was really for nothing because nobody perceives you the way you want to be perceived. Might as well be your damn self. If they're not going to perceive you the way you want to be perceived, be yourself, boo. Be yourself. You can see that all the drama that happens in your movie isn't really noticed by anybody around you. It's obvious that everybody's attention is focused on their own movie. They don't even notice you when you are sitting right beside them in their theater. The actors all have their attention on their story, and that's the only reality they live in. Their attention is so hooked by their own creation that they don't even notice their own presence, the one who is observing their movie. In that moment, everything changes for you. Nothing is the same anymore, because now you see what's really happening. People live in their own world, in their own movie, in their own story. They invest all their faith in that story and that story is the truth for them. But it is a relative truth because it is not your truth. That's like in a relationship. One of the parties goes out and starts having a relationship with somebody else. The other party starts to blame themselves to see where they went wrong, what did I didn't do uh, right, what was I missing, and it was never about you. It's their story and it's what they needed. Now, it makes them a coward to not tell you. So you have to decide whether or not you want to be with a coward sharing with somebody else and having body fluids of somebody else inside of you you gotta look at these things and if that's what you're okay with if you like it baby girl everybody else gonna love it now you can see that all their opinions about you really concern the character who lives in their movie not yours the one who they are judging in your name is a character they create people see what they want to create you and, and make you be that whatever people think of you is really about the image they have of you and that image isn't you that's why that saying what other people think about you ain't none of your business is very poignant it's, it's, it's on time because what somebody else how you see me is not my business how somebody else sees me is not my business how do i see me that's what i need to focus on what does tracy think about tracy that's what's important and not in an arrogant egotistical way where i'm like i'm the shit and you ain't no, but in the way where I said, I'm fucking amazing, whether you like it or not. At this point, it's clear that the people you love most don't really know you and you don't know them either. The only thing you know about them is what you believe about them. You only know the image you create for them. And that has nothing to do with the real people. You thought that you knew your parents, your spouse, your children, and your friends very well. Child, you don't know your children. I teach them at school. You are not even barely acquainted with them little monsters no you're not you don't know them at all your sweet little sally boo mm, your sweet little tanisha mm, your sweet little tanisha and sally and johnny they come to school and they tear us but you just see the little sweet side because that's the side they want you to see i still love them though but they are terrorists the truth is you have no idea what's going on in their world what they are thinking what they are feeling what they are dreaming what is even more surprising is that you thought you knew yourself 
then you come to the conclusion that you don't even know yourself because you've been acting for so long. You've mastered pretending to be what you are not. Wow, we do it. With this awareness, you realize how ridiculous it is to say, my beloved doesn't understand me. Nobody understands me. Of course they don't. You don't even understand yourself. Your personality is always changing from moment from one moment to the next, according to the role you were playing, according to the secondary characters in your story, according to the way you're dreaming at that time. At home, you have a certain personality. At work, your personality is completely different. With your female friends, it's one way. With your male friends, it's another way. But all of your life, you made the assumption that other people know you so well. And when they didn't do what you expected them to do, you took it personally reacted with anger and used words to create a lot of conflict and drama for nothing sometimes in relationships married people think the other person is supposed to know what they think ain't nobody inside your mind you bail inside your mind now it's easy to understand why there's so much conflict between humans the world is populated by billions of dreamers who aren't aware that people are living their own world dreaming their own dream from that point of view the main character which is their only point of view everything is about them when the secondary characters say something that doesn't agree with their point of view they get angry and try to defend their position they want the secondary characters to be the way they want them to be and if they are not they feel very hurt they take everything personally everybody's out to get you with all of this awareness you can also understand the solution and it's something so simple and logical you already know what it is don't take anything personally now the meaning of the second agreement is profoundly clear this agreement gives you immunity in the interactions you have with the secondary characters in your story you don't have to concern yourself with other people's points of view once you can see that nothing others do is about you it doesn't matter who gossips about you who blames you who rejects you who disagrees with your point of view all the gossip doesn't affect you you don't even bother to defend your point of view that's where i'm at now i don't even defend my point of view anymore i'm not doing it you just let the dogs bark and surely they will bark and bark and bark so what whatever people say doesn't affect you excuse me because you are immune to their opinions and their emotional poison you are immune from the predators the ones you use gossip to hurt other people the ones who you want to use other people to hurt themselves don't take anything personal. It's a beautiful tool of interaction with your own kind, human to human. And it is a big ticket to personal freedom because you no longer have to rule your life according to other people's opinions. This really frees you. You can do whatever you want to do, knowing that whatever you do, it has nothing to do with anyone but you. The only person who needs to be concerned about the story of you is you. This awareness changes everything. Remember, awareness of the truth is the first step to self-mastery. And that is what you're doing right now. You're being reminded of the truth. Now that you understand this truth, now that you're aware, how can you take anything personally anymore? Once you understand that all humans live in their own world, in their own movie, in their own dream, the second agreement is pure common sense. Don't take anything personal. And with that, you should live the life you want to live. But that first agreement, cuts out all of the foolishness and the lies you tell like well i'm just being myself and they wouldn't understand so i'm not telling them being impeccable with your word if you are in a relationship and you desire to be with somebody else be bold and courageous enough to tell your partner this relationship is not working for me the way i want and i see this person i want to explore your partner may be like girl boy i'm so glad you said that because i want to go explore some people too we can just open this relationship but let's bust it wide open have a wide open relationship they might say that or they might say no, you have to stay with just me. You cannot do that. You have to stay with me. And you can say, listen, I didn't told you, so I'm going to go ahead and go about my business because this ain't going to work. And they'll have their story and their dream about how terrible you are, but it's okay. You were honest and you moved on. Or they may say, you know, go on and I wish you peace and love and joy. And then once you walk out that door, they shut that door back and you can't double back. And that's okay too. But your integrity, being impeccable with your word, means you don't just try to run and sleep with other people and lie. You're only lying to yourself because you're slimy. You're slimy and you're grimy and it's going to catch up with you. It just does. It always does. But anyway, tomorrow, and you're slimy and grimy. You can change that. But in the moment you're doing the things that are slimy and grimy, you're slimy and grimy. I'm not judging you. I'm just pointing you out to yourself, boo. Anywho. Ch chapter five tomorrow truth or fiction we get into the third agreement don't make assumptions this is tracy lanae i'm grateful i'm grateful i'm grateful and i'm blessed i'm gonna be here doing this 
at least for another three years because I've made a commitment to myself and being impeccable with my word. And I may only have 73 subscribers right now, but one day I'm going to have a million and 73 subscribers. Anyway, have an amazing day. Like it, subscribe to my channel and share this video and come back and be with me tomorrow. If the good Lord willing, the creek don't rise, we will get into the rest of this book.